neckline pleats, a little cuff with gathers on a really feminine sleeve are some of the features of the blouse I'm going to show you. Sneak peek and also a little chat about sewing cup sizes and bra cup sizes. So keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back to all of you who are always stopping by and for you who are new to the channel and might have just stumbled upon this video. In this channel we focus a lot about sewing, very practical content about sewing techniques, fitting, anything you want about sewing you'll probably find it here so if you think that's a really cool idea go ahead and subscribe like the video if you liked it and tap on the bell so you don't miss out when new videos go live a few episodes ago there was a new look pattern that had have really pretty gathers on the neckline and that is a feature that i've always liked i really wanted to try a pattern that actually had that feature there so I made that new look pattern the other day, it fit okay, I barely fit into the sizing, it gave me a lot of food for thought and just looking around I found the daisy blouse or top from Sinclair Patterns and it had exactly what I wanted, super pretty neckline pleats, that's what I wanted with a neckline that's not too high, not too low and then there's sleeve options there, a tulip sleeve that's short and a longer one that sort of looks like a bishop type sleeve and it's got a casing at the bottom with elastic there to bring it in like gathers. Now I'm different to all of you because I'm in the southern hemisphere and it is getting really cold. I'm actually wearing some sleeves right now. Like I never need really, really warm clothes, but this is the time of the year when sleeves look really appealing to me on patterns and I start sewing some sleeves. <laughs> in this opportunity, I actually considered heavily sewing that sleeve. It's super pretty too. This design is for lightweight woven fabrics that drape. Here is where your rayons come in, your crepes, your silks, chiffons, georgettes, anything that you grab and it's just beautifully flowing and lightweight. This is where even cotton lawn sometimes is mentioned in these types of patterns. I myself have never seen a cotton lawn that is lightweight and drapey. I have seen some that are lightweight for sure. They're very lightweight, they're pretty prints, everything, but they're not that drapey. If you make this style with a non-drapey fabric, then the features will just pop up more. There's tiny little pleats here on the shoulders. This is not the blouse, by the way. <laughs> I'm just pointing to my body. Little pleats here, the pleats there, the ones that will form uh, with the gathers here, uh, with a non-drapey fabric, they will just poof, like pop up and stick out a bit more but it might be a look that you like. In my case, I, it's not a look that I like. <laughs> when, I th when I sew pleats and gathers and all that type of feature, I always try to do it with really lightweight fabrics and my favorite ones are chiffons. I do have a pretty nice chiffon collection there in my stash and I love using it. You see me make all the time. I love wearing these things that are sheer with a little cami underneath for winter sleeves perfect now i want to talk about the sizing a little bit and that will lead into what i mentioned in the introduction that i did want to mention the difference between sewing cup sizes and bra cup sizes because i've mentioned that passing by in some videos and i always have comments asking what <laughs> explain more so that is what i'm going to do today but this pattern comes from sizes 0 to 22 us in this brand choosing your size has an extra step uh, that you won't see in many other brands and the first step is actually knowing how tall you are because there's height options as you can see on the screen check how tall you are look at the chart i fit into the tall length the tall draft so i choose that pattern first so if you're usually doing petite adjustments you probably won't need to do it in this pattern because there's a petite version regular and a tall version and there are six bus cup sizes there available from a through to double d and when you look at the sizing chart, it's different to other patterns I've seen because they don't provide you a full bust measurement. So you have an upper bust measurement. You can see on the screen what that measurement is for size 22. So that is the upper bust measurement, the largest one. And then for the hips, you can also see it there. When you look at this chart, it can be a bit confusing because most of us aren't used to taking this measurement of the upper bust. Now, why the upper bust? <laughs> Most of us are not really used to taking this measurement of the upper bust here. You can see a diagram there. It's not difficult to do. You do it with your well-fitting bra, the type of bra that you wear all the time. 
and you measure your full bust, you measure your high bust, do a little math, see what the difference is. In all the patterns that offer sewing cup sizes, you will probably see a little diagram similar to this that says that A cup has a one inch difference and so on and so forth. You keep adding on an inch for the cup size, but this is sewing cup size, it's not bra cup size. The difference with the bra cup size is that it takes the under bust. So right below the bust, just basically around the rib cage, where the band of the bra is sort of fitted when you're wearing your bra, and it takes that measurement and the full bust and makes the difference there. So it's totally different. You could be like a double D cup bra cup size, but then when you take your upper and your full, you might just have a two inch difference and that means that for sewing you will be a b cup so it's a really interesting topic to look at and have a big impact into the fit of your clothes if you just see a, a pattern that says we have a d cup and you and you wear a d cup bra and you're like whoop i'm gonna make the d cup it might be too big for you bra cup sizes actually cup the bust it's a cup from the bottom to the top and it's different because a sewing cup size doesn't actually cup anything, it goes over the bust. And it's more to do in relation with the fit of the shoulders, right? So for example, if a pattern is traditionally drafted for a B cup, like commercial patterns, and you have a larger cup size in general, D cup, E cup, you know, and you choose your size based on your full bust, your shoulders on the pattern are gonna fall and be huge. You know, they're just not gonna be right. But on a pattern that does have sewing cup sizes, you can choose the larger cup size that takes into account this difference while keeping the shoulder fit correct. So it is a really good feature to find in some patterns. That's why I think that pattern companies that do this uh, is just amazing because it takes a lot of the guesswork and a lot of a lot of cutting and arts and crafts out of our <laughs> enjoyment because I'm pretty sure we all like to sew and we don't enjoy the process of getting ready to sew that much. I know the times I've had to do a lot of cutting and adjusting and fitting, it makes the experience not terrible but just more lengthy and not as fun, not as enjoyable as when you sort of know, you take some measurements, figure out what the difference between your upper and your full bust is, choose your sewing cup size, make a garment, and you will most likely have a good experience. So I really appreciate that. I have a C cup bra cup size and sewing cup size. In the shops, I will go and buy a C cup and that will fit my bust. And also when I measure my high bust and my full bust, I also have the same difference. So in my case, it's very easy to choose and there's not much confusion going on. But I know that's not the case for everyone because everyone's bust is so different. So take a few minutes, measure yourself nicely, find out what is going on with your bust. So my choices for the Daisy blouse were a size 14, and a C cup size. And yeah, I was very confident about this pattern that everything was gonna fit really well. And it's a very simple pattern. It doesn't have many pattern pieces. You have a front that's cut on the fold, a back that's cut on the fold, sleeve pieces and binding. That's pretty much it really. And now I went ahead and added an extra piece that I drafted myself for a little cuff at the bottom of the sleeve instead of folding under and making a casing. And that's just personal preference. I like anything around here to be sort of loose and not touch me that much. So that's a little change I did, but it doesn't really change the overall style of the blouse. In up close and so personal, you're going to see a variety of sewing things <laughs> and everywhere from marking on the fabric to basting the pleats, French seams, the sleeves, the binding on the neckline, the little cuffs. In a very short little video, I'm very proud of myself. It's not as long as you think. So let's hop into all the practical sewing goodness of up close and so personal. This is the center of the neckline. On the front there are some pleats and they need marking and I've got this she fabric. 
I've got the right sides folded because that's where the marks need to be in order to fold them. I put my tracing paper underneath the fabric there and in between the pattern piece and the fabric. Uh, it's one I've been using for years, but uh, and I just marked really strongly there and I'm just going to check if I'm happy with those marks. You can see them, maybe maybe you can't see them, but I can see the yellow lines there and I prefer to do it with a pencil so that it's a solid line. I find that if I use a wheel, the little dots will probably get lost in there. This is the back part of the sleeve, it actually says to the back there and there's a little notch there, just one. And there's a single notch on the front and the back and I think this is particular to this pattern company. But to not get confused, I took the original notch, put a line there and just drew one next to it above. There and I did the same with the arm side notch, the single notch, I just added one there and it's just going to help me not get confused. So I'm just doing it the traditional way. Uh, I don't let things like this disturb me when I'm sewing. If I find differences in the way pattern companies mark their patterns, I just adapt to that. At the bottom of the sleeve, there's supposed to be a hem that you fold up and sew to form a casing for an elastic, and I find that uncomfortable myself. I like how the gathers look on the bottom, so I'm gonna just draft a little cuff instead. Um, I'm just eyeballing here. I obviously want my hand to fit in nicely because I'm not going to be doing buttons or anything. It will just be a simple little cuff at the bottom. And I want enough ease to take my hand in and out. That's about 25 centimeters or 10 inches. I've just cut a little rectangle actually, nothing special. 10 inches across and from the lines is 2 inches there. I've left 3 8 seam allowance everywhere so when the cuff is done and it's folded in half like that and sewn it will have a finished width there of an inch and I think it will be discreet there like that at the bottom of my sleeve. I've just pinned these four pleats as you can see with one pin and I've got them on the wrong side of the blouse as you can see it's already been stay stitched of course and now I'm just going to pin them in the direction they're supposed to go. So you can see the red marks of the friction pen there, they were done pretty accurately on top of the yellow. Now on the right side, these pleats are going to be looking to the outside, like headed towards your arm side, that's where the pleats look. This is the center one that you're seeing there and I'm just putting another pin there and then the one on the side will also look to the side, towards arm side. And then you have another one on the other side, the same. So they're going to look super cute on the front and see they all headed towards the sides. Now if you look at these pleats from the inside, all the pleats are towards the center. Now at the machine I'm just basting these in place, super careful. I do sort of not sew over the pins, try to remove it as soon as I'm going to go over them. Uh, but yeah, that will just hold them in place and keep them safe there until later. step of the French seams I put the pins right next to the edge so I don't damage the fabric and they're within the seam allowance so the first one is wrong size together sewing at a quarter of an inch quarter inch presser foot to help that go along nicely and it's not hard to do French seams it's just a few extra seams and for this fabric it looks really nice after that I'm gonna trim that seam allowance to half so it'll be about an eighth of an inch left there on all the seams and then you flip this right sides together and do the second row. I thought I had filmed this, but I hadn't. After doing this, I tried it on and whoops, the hips are a little bit snug, a little bit. So I unripped all that and just did a regular seam with a smaller seam allowance. That gave me about three quarters of an inch extra at the hips and that's what I needed. Now what I'm sewing here are the little cuffs that I've drafted. I'm just sewing those short ends together. I had left a 3 8 seam allowance for that so that's what I'm doing there and now I have a little round cuff now on one of these edges I'm just doing a quick guide stitch at 3 8 so that it's easier for me to fold that under at a later stage very easy step to do and it just helps the cuff be nice and neat afterwards now I'm gathering the bottom of my sleeve I've already sewn the, the seam of the sleeve as you can see there 
I also did regular stitch. I didn't do French seam on the sleeves, so it matches my new side seams. And now um, I just do one single row for gathering. Uh, it's just a small little thing I'm trying to gather. So I've got my sleeve inside the cuff, as you can see there, right sides together. And I've matched the seams there and you can see the gathered bit is inside. Now I've left the gathered bit inside because that's how I'm going to sew. Um, I'm going to sew all the way around, putting my presser foot inside, as you can see. This is the best way to manipulate small cuffs like this. And I always want the gathers to be on the top so I can go and, and, and see what's going on with the gathers. If you put the gathers on the bottom, the feed dogs might just like try to eliminate them. <laughs> And then you don't really know what's going on. So I don't rush this step. Uh, this step does not need to be rushed. Okay, there you can see it inside out. The gathers are there, the cuff is there dangling, you can see the guide stitch that I've done. I've actually searched it to protect it. Now I'm going to just fold that under and then meet the seam there. And I'm going to pin that all the way around and instead of stitching it with the machine, I'm going to hand sew it with a slip stitch on the inside. It'll be invisible and super delicate. Now for the sleeve, I like putting my sleeve inside, matching all the seams as you can see matching the shoulder seams, the notches, there's the little pleat that the sleeve has as well. It has to be super neat because it matches the shoulder seam. And I've done some gathering, slight gathering, just one row really. And now I like putting the sleeve underneath and the arm side on the top, that way the feed dogs can help you with that easing in. And you'll never have a pucker, it's so easy, it's really, a no stress type sleeve insertion it works super well look at that little cute pleat there i love that detail on this pattern now for the neckline i've just made my own bias binding i've wrapped it around the raw edge and hand basted it and then i'm just sewing it down nothing special this is my beautiful daisy blouse i'm actually matching i'm, I'm trying to be more conscious of that what i wear for the video and the clothes because sometimes it's clashing big time same as the lipstick <laughs> So here it is. What I mostly liked was this neckline there. Now you see that I've opted to put bias binding that I made. This is 18 millimeter bias tape that I made myself. Just a small little amount just for the neckline. I didn't go crazy and make yards and yards of it. Just what I needed. And I just wanted to have some detail there because the top part of this fabric turned out to be mainly black. And you can see some red little details there. I really wanted that to happen and I was careful to place my binding so that it would happen. You saw that I take the easy option of just wrapping the bias tape around the raw edge. I do it really carefully. I put a thousand pins and then I hand baste and then I sew and it's always looking super nice like that when I do that. So I really, really like doing that. When I put bias binding like that over the raw edge, I have been asked, do I trim away seam allowance? Uh, because the original technique he had the binding on the inside I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be trimming away things uh, to have a higher or lower neckline. That doesn't really bother me <clears throat> if the neckline turns out to be 3 eighths of an inch higher than it should be because that was the seam allowance used there. I just do it, you know, the area where I do trim sometimes is here. If I'm doing a sleeveless design that had the binding to the inside and I chose to make it visible, sometimes I will trim here just to make sure that the width is okay, that it's not cutting into here. That is the only time I will actually trim away seam allowance. But for necklines, I don't. <laughs> there are those beautiful little pleats. You can see that there's like a center pleat and then they go off towards the side seam there. The instructions have really, really clear photos and diagrams about this, so it's super easy to do. All the instructions and photos are based on you looking at the fabric on the right side up. That's why I actually marked my little lines on the <laughs> right side of the fabric. So that was super fun and easy to do and just gives the blouse something extra. On the sleeve, there's a little pleat there. Now on the inside, you had a little pleat that was basted on the top of the sleeve head, similar to this. So when I did my gathering stitches to actually ease the sleeve in, I did it on the round. I did gathering from notch up to where the pleat was 
on the other side from the notches up to the pleat. I didn't do the gathering stitches across that pleat. I didn't want to touch that and have that pleat gather. I mean, how are you going to have a pleat and then make it gather? It's going to look terrible. So that's what I did there. Super easy to set in. As you saw, I do it with a sleeve on the bottom and there's, there was an excessive ease drafted into the sleeve anyway, so it was pretty easy to sew. You never get a paka and it's just so much easier. If you're not happy sewing sleeves or you think, oh, the sleeves, you know, gives you a bit of anxiety, try this method, I promise you, try it once. If you've been doing it the other way around for a lot of years, like I used to, <laughs> I know the feeling of, oh, those little gathers and, you know. When I swapped and started doing it this way, I was a complete convert to this method and I'm not going back. It's just so good. So if you haven't tried it, give it a go. You won't lose anything by trying something new and you might like it. Cuffs, they're so pretty and so delicate and I really didn't want to have any top stitching on them. That's why I folded this area in, pinned and then I hand slip stitched that there. No one can see it and it looks really delicate. And I would totally do that with chiffon on a cuff, you know, it just looks so much nicer. There is a curved hem. This pattern, and I've seen that on other patterns as well, they have you hem first as one of the first steps for construction. So you do your hem first, and then you do your side seams. And it just helps that area there be neater. I don't do that. <laughs> I just don't do that. What I do to help this area just not pucker and lie neat is just do a really narrow hem. That's all I do. If on the pattern it says that the, that the hem is 5 eighths of an inch hem allowance, I'll probably just do a narrower one, like 3 eighths. I hand baste the hem, I press it, and then I sew it, and then it works every time. It looks beautiful, and there's no puckers or anything strange there, so that's nice. Um, as you saw, my little saga with the hips. I had done beautiful French seams as instructed. Well, it is an option in the pattern. It doesn't say you have to do it, but it does give you the proper seam allowance to do it. And I did it. And even I, I've kept them there on the shoulders. It looks really pretty. And I would have had French seams on the side too. I tried it on with only my bra on, right? And I thought, oh, the fit is just right. It's just right. And of course, I'm not gonna wear a she garment um, on its own, you know, I'm, I, it's not a look I'm going for. <laughs> I went to grab a camisole, those little tight camisoles that I always wear underneath she things, put my top back on and the feet around the bust, everywhere up to the high hip was okay, but at the full hip, it was just a tad snug. But when that happens, sometimes it can confuse you into thinking you need another fitting adjustment, which might not be the case. I thought about it for probably two seconds, grabbed my seam ripper and spent some quality seam ripping time, sorting out that seam, pressing it again to make it flat, sewing it again, surging it, and just making the seam allowance smaller. I probably gained three fourths of an inch extra at the full hip. That's all I needed to be able to wear this comfortably with a layer underneath. And well, of course, you're going to wear pants and skirt or something underneath. You're not going to be walking around in your undies, you know. In essence, I think this blouse turned out to be a 14 and then a 15 at the full hip sort of thing. <laughs> I cut this a few days ago. I did measure it. I must have just gained a few on my hips, which is not surprising in this time of year <laughs> and with not being able to go outside. Here is a far away shot of my blouse. You can see the curved hem and I like this length for my proportions. It's really nice at the side, it's higher, the back is curved. And I really like the sleeves, the length, how they gather here. When I tried this on after doing the French seams, just this bottom bit here was snug, too snug actually. And because it's she, I need to wear a cami underneath and I obviously will have a skirt or pants underneath. So just that three quarters of an inch extra that I added by doing a smaller seam allowance made all the difference. When this was tight on my hips, because it was tight, this would ride up and then there'd be a lot of pulling of fabric there. And then I, some people might confuse that with sway back adjustment when actually it was just the hips that were tight. So once I released that pressure from just the bottom here, there's no more pulling of fabric there at the back. So when you think you need sway back, just check that the hips are fitting properly and it's not making the whole top right up there and create that excess there. These are the little cuffs that I've put on there. Otherwise, this would be a little bit shorter. 
and would have an elastic casing it would still give that gathered effect only I like the cuffs better because they don't actually touch my skin they're like nice and and loose there and I can get my hand in and out easily with the amount that I measured I wanted to have my binding visible so wrapping around the raw area for two reasons one that it's pretty and I wanted to have some sort of red detail there on the neckline because the last detail of red is like down there I wanted something up here too <laughs> just visual something to pop there and I think when there's pleats there it just looks nicer it just looks nice and flat and straight there I have done other tops with pleats where I've actually done the binding inside and I, I don't know it just makes this area not lie that flat because of the pleats right there this was just a small modification you know it doesn't really change anything other than having the neckline a tad higher because I'm not losing seam allowance there the sleeve is super delicate and super super discreet I don't actually like those vintage ones that have huge things you know those sleeves that are in now that are just massive not my thing but this is perfect super nice the feet on the shoulders is perfectly fine for me there it's right at my shoulders and that's really got to do with the choice of the cup size as I mentioned before you can see the slight sheerness of the fabric that has these little stripes and I've got the black cami underneath I love that and then the little pleats there that come from there super delicate I love this so in summary I super love it it's super feminine I love it in a sheer fabric like this love these little sleeves they're just so delicate and so feminine and in a light lightweight fabric they'll never be bulky you know I wouldn't want to do this detail in a thicker fabric that wouldn't drape nicely I'm just stoked that I don't have to lengthen arms and things. Um, I just made it straight up and it's perfect length. Everything's good. Sewing this blouse was such a good experience. It's a design I really think is classic, timeless. I can totally see making more of these for sure. And even I would experiment with making it like a really lightweight knit. Just a thought, I might try that. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about that option too. Although it's not mentioned in the pattern that is suitable for neat fabric, sometimes you can tweak a little thing and it can be. If you want to give this pattern a try or any other patterns in this brand, I do have an affiliate link down below in the description box. I did apply to be an affiliate and was accepted. And yeah, you know about affiliate links. They don't cost you extra if you want to buy something, but I do get a small commission from that and that helps support me what I do in this channel. I wanted to thank you all so much for your awesome response to my easy pants sewing series. I am super excited about it. I think having this mini series not only will help you fit your first pants or a better pant than you have in the past, but it also helps me organize myself and have a really clear plan. I'm very motivated. Please keep your eyes open for the next episode of Let's Sew Easy Pants. I hope you have a nice weekend at home. Um, thank you so much for everyone's concern about my well-being. I know international news can sort of focus on the worst things that are happening here in Brazil and it is totally happening here um, in some areas of the country. Fortunately, I live in a rural area and we are very in tune with what's going on around here in the, in the cities nearby. And at least where we live right here, which is in the middle of nowhere, it seems to be uh, contained for, for now. Although us as a family, we are like going out and like doing things. My husband is extremely careful. And so is everyone else when he has to go and buy food. Uh, thank you so much for your concern. It touches me that you are concerned about me. So thank you so much. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.